know that my kids see adults smoking, and I know that one day they will probably be curious about smoking and they'll try it. They'll smoke. Assuming this, I have decided to start teaching my kids about smoking, about what it is, why adults do it, you know, why it's not intended for children, how it's marketed, and explain some of the laws surrounding it. What's smoking got to do with porn? I'm going to talk more about this analogy later on in the video because I have decided to approach porn in the exact same way. Let me ask you a yes or no question. Are you worried about how easily accessible porn is? Do you think your kid will have unrealistic expectations around sex and dating due to viewing porn? And do you think porn will negatively impact your kid? I'm a mom too, and I could be worried about all of those things, but I'm not, even though I know that adult entertainment has never been so easily accessible to minors. You know the average age of first viewing of porn is now 12 years old, and just under 15% of kids 10 and younger have viewed it. I've read the headlines, I've read the research, and I've seen the documentaries on porn, and I will not try and use those same fear tactics to scare you or try to convince you to have a porn talk with your kid. Fear is a motivating factor for a lot of people, especially parents, but it's just, it's just not my way. It's not my approach. I want to see you succeed in having the porn talk with your 10, 11, or 12 year old. And I know that you can in three easy steps. I can teach you that. But in order to do that, I'm going to make two assumptions about you. And I have to do this because these are the obstacles that I constantly see when I am talking with parents who struggle with the porn talk. Assumption number one, you can have a conversation about porn without overgeneralizing your opinion. And assumption number two, you've watched porn. All right, let me explain. Tell me if you've said this. I'm afraid of how porn will affect my kid and I really don't want them to become addicted to porn. That is a common fear that I consistently hear from moms. And by the way, quote unquote porn addiction is not classified by the medical community as an addiction. Check out this video after you finish watching this one if you wanna know what I, what I mean. So when a mom shares with me this particular fear about porn, I will usually ask her this question. When you do watch porn, Tell me a reason why you choose to watch it. Nine times out of 10, the mom will be shocked that I have asked them this question and they will immediately say to me, I don't watch porn. I say, that's totally fine, not a problem. In the past, when you watched porn, why did you choose to watch it? And here's where most moms will tell me, well, my boyfriend or my partner or my husband at the time wanted to watch it, so I watched it with them. Some of them will say to me, well, I watched it once when I was in college just to see what it was but I didn't really like it. And very rarely will a mom tell me that they have never watched it. And I bring this up for two reasons. Reason number one, if you have never chosen to watch porn for yourself and you've only viewed it because your partner asked you to watch it with them, then your porn viewing came with expectations. And nobody should feel forced or expected to watch porn if they don't want to, or at least not even get a say in what to watch. And second, if you believe that you are a better person for never having watched porn compared to a person who has watched it, that will come across in the conversation. It's a value that you uphold and there's nothing wrong with holding that value, but it can create feelings of shame in a teen or a young adult if you as their parent talks about porn from a proverbial higher ground. Now, don't go twisting what I am saying here. If you have never watched porn, that is fine. Simply be aware of yourself and how you feel about adults who do watch porn and how that may come across in conversations about it. With those assumptions being made, here are the three seriously simple steps that you need to do before having that first layer of the porn talk. If you're liking this video so far, go on and let me know that. Step one, assume that they will watch it eventually. I know, I know, I know. You don't want them to watch it. I don't want my kids to smoke or to drink alcohol or to drive or to use drugs. So what do I do? I talk about it. I explain what those things are, why they're available, who uses it, when adults can use it or do it. And then most importantly, my values around it. 
And I specifically leave that one to last because it is crucial that you not share your values around one of these topics with your kids until you have provided the age appropriate and factual information so that they have a solid understanding of what it is. So let's continue with that smoking example. I don't want my kids to smoke, but I assume that one day they will. So I started with some really basic conversations around smoking, and I have been layering more and more information around smoking and tobacco with each talk. I explain what smoking is and why adults choose to smoke and why it's not intended for children and how it's marketed and why I believe smoking is unhealthy and choose not to smoke. By making this assumption that they will smoke or at least try it, it really makes me focus on what it is that I want them to know about smoking and tobacco before I ever share my personal opinion on it. I want them to know the health impacts and the like statistical chances of developing lung cancer caused by smoking versus not smoking. I want them to know that the reasons a person chooses to smoke isn't because they are a bad person. It's a wide variety of things, all the way from like nicotine addiction to simply they like it. This same approach that I use towards smoking can be used when having the porn talk or the porn literacy talk. And it starts with assuming that they will eventually watch porn. And so if you are willing to make that assumption right now, you've completed step one. Seriously simple, right? <laughs> Step two, do not have the porn talk out of fear. What this means is do not start the porn talk because you are afraid that porn will negatively impact your kid. It goes hand in hand with step one, because if you are assuming that they will eventually watch it, you're not going to be having a talk about it out of fear. You'll be actually focusing the conversation on preparing them for what it is that they could see, not trying to convince them not to watch it. As a mom myself, I get how easy it is to fall into fear-based parenting. I mean, have you tried picking out a car seat and ask for recommendations from a mom's group? Did you read five books to your kids every single day? Because if you didn't, they entered kindergarten knowing a million less words than their peers. How about screens? Are you letting your kid watch screens, play on screens? I mean, <laughs> it's, that's a lot of fear for any parent. And, and those topics aren't even controversial. I am not here to scare you or convince you to have a porn talk with your kid. Nope, I'm not doing that. I want you to go into any sex talk, but specifically the porn talk, feeling confident in what it is that you're about to say and why you are bringing this conversation up at this specific age and at this specific moment in time. Because if you feel confident with how to explain a topic and you know why you wanna have that specific talk in that specific moment, then you are most definitely not parenting out of fear. But if you don't feel so confident, then we should talk. I invite you to fill out the form that is linked in the description and comments and find out if my sex ed parenting course is right for you. I've designed this course to give you the knowledge and the skill to have any sex talk, but specifically the sex masturbation and porn talk without using fear-based strategies. All right, so you are done parenting out of fear. You are finished with using fear tactics and you are now going to use, what? How are, you, how are you gonna have the sex talks? Don't know? Go fill out that form. Let's talk. And then you will be on your way to completing step number two. All right, step number three, parental controls. Yay or nay? Decide ahead of time if you will use parental controls. Parental controls are a tool that are designed to protect your child from things that are not yet age appropriate. Parental controls are not there so you can avoid a porn talk. Here's what I mean. If you decide that parental controls will be used in your home and on all of the devices that your kid has access to, tell them that. Tell them why you've chosen to use parental controls. This goes right along with step number two. Since you are not parenting the talks out of fear, you are not afraid to tell your kid why parental controls are on the devices, what types of content you've blocked, and what to do if they come across that content because parental controls aren't perfect. If you think of parental controls as a way to delay your child's access and potential unintentional view of content that is not yet age appropriate, you will better prepare them for when they do have full and unfiltered access to the internet at 16, 17, or 18. Because you already assume that they will view porn one day, but that day is not 
today while they are still 12 years old. So here we are, you've completed those three steps and you are ready to define porn to your 10 year old or explain porn literacy to your 12 year old. And this video can help you get started on doing just that. Or you can develop your own timeline for your kid on when you want to have each layer of the porn talk and what goes into each of those layers with me in my sex ed parenting course. I'm excited for you to start intentionally leaving the sex talks, especially the porn talk, without using any fear-based strategies.